Okay, let's create an, an animate kaleidoscope banner. So I'm going to start off by creating a new document, changing the size to 300, hit the tab key once to 250, hit the tab key twice and make it 30 frames per second. Make sure that your HTML5 canvas, that's important, and I'll go ahead and click OK. I'm going to start off by selecting the oval primitive tool. So I'll click over here and select that tool there. I want to make sure that I don't have a stroke. It won't hurt if you have one, but it's just completely unnecessary because we're going to use the oval uh, that we create as the mask and strokes don't do anything on a mask. So make sure that you don't have any, any color on there. So now I'm going to click over here in my artwork and I'm just going to hold the option key down. And for starters, it doesn't matter if it's 100 by 100 or 50 by 50. I just need a nice clean round circle there. So I hit OK. And then I'm going to go to my alignment tab. Uh, or you can go to the window drop down menu and call up align. And then that'll show this tab over here. I'm going to align it to the stage. So I'm going to go center and center in the vertical as well. Now I'll get my free transform tool and I'll scale this up with the shift key and I want to make the circle slightly larger than the whole of the banner. So here's why I'm using the primitive tool it's because it's very easy to create a pie shape. So it's a 45 degree pie. This is going to become a mask and the mask is going to be inside a movie clip. So first thing I need to do is go to the Modify drop-down menu, slide down to Convert to Symbol, or do an F8. This will open up this dialog window, the Convert to Symbol, and I want to select a movie clip. I'll go ahead and hit OK. So now you can see in the library I have my symbol number one. It, while this is selected, the properties are also displaying that it's symbol number one. So this is important. You need to go inside the symbol in order for this to work correctly. So I'm going to double click and now you'll notice that I'm inside symbol 1 which is inside scene 1. I'm going to add a new layer and I'm going to move that layer to the bottom and I'm going to go get a photograph. So I'll go to the file drop down menu, import to stage and I'll select this cottonwood image and that drops my photo there. So I'm going to be animating the photo so I'll move this up over here and this is going to be my mask so while I'm thinking about it I'll go ahead and double click on that icon right there and I'm going to make that into a mask hit OK and you can either click this or drag it up or you can also double click on it and click on mask and then that'll assign it to the mask layer immediately above. If you lock both layers, you'll see the mask take place. Okay, so now we want to animate the photograph. So I've got the photograph selected. I'm going to go to the Insert drop-down menu and select Create Classic Tween. And now I'm going to go to Frame uh, 90 and I'm going to give myself an F6 there. That's a keyframe. And I'm going to go to frame 90 on the layer number one, which is the mask. And here I want to do an F5. And that all that does is extends the timeline. Okay, so now I'm going to set up for animation. So at frame 30, I'm going to give myself an F6. At frame 60, I'll give myself an F6. This is all completely arbitrary, however you want to do your animation. So over here what I'll do is I'll go ahead and rotate in place. And I'll move this up like that. So you can see as I scrub, this is what my animation is doing. And I can see right there I get a little bit of an overlap. So I don't want that. So I think what I'll do is I'll try nudging this a little further. And let's see if I get the overlap. Just barely missed it. Now the other thing I can do is, well, I'll leave it like that. 
and now I'm going to go to this layer over here on top so just to save a little time I'm going to steal the current position by holding the option key down and replacing the frame that I'm going to that puts the same position information there and now over here I can drag this down over here and then from here it's going to go back to the original position see that I'm running into a little bit of a problem with all this overlap so what I'll do is while it's down here I'll move this a little higher and I don't want the uh, the uh, mask to extend beyond the boundaries of the photo so that looks pretty good to me and however you want to do your animation it's up to you so I'm going to do a command return and we'll see what it looks like as a banner. I'm only going to get one small quadrant of the pie. And now because I happen to be working with double screens on my computer, I have to go over to the other screen and grab the banner. So that's what it's starting to look like. Okay, so come back over here. I want to leave the movie clip and go into the main scene. And now what I want to do is I want to make copies of this. So while that's selected, I'm going to hold the Option key down and drag that straight up. And now I want to make this look like it's a reflection of this bottom pie. So I'm going to select the Transform palette. Make sure that the constraint is not turned on. I want the chain link to be broken. And on the up and down, I'm going to make this into a negative 100. And that'll flip the visual of the movie clip so it looks like it's a mirror image of what I have. So now I'm going to move this down over here a little bit and let it settle in. And so now I've got the makings of my kaleidoscope. Let's take a quick peek and see what that's starting to look like. You can see the effect. Come back over here. So select that. Copy that and move over here to this location. Actually, I'll just do it this way. I'm holding the Option key down. And I'll rotate this all the way around. If I can get it. Sometimes you have to click and reselect the selection tool to get it to find the rotation tool. Rotate it all the way around. I'm going to move this until they snap there. Select that. Hold the Option key down. Move this over here. And I'll rotate this around. There's, there's no way to make a copy of a rotation. I'm holding the Option key right now and the Shift key to constrain and so that it rotates in the center, but you'll notice I didn't get a copy of the original. That's why I'm taking this in its small little piece and getting them to line up like that. So that looks a little close. I'm just nudging it a little bit and I can see right in here that it's not quite perfect. And it won't be. That's not that big of a deal. What I want to do now is I want to make sure that there's a little bit more of an overlap. Let's, I'll show you what I mean here. So you'll see in here there's this, this little break. You can see where the lines meet up. So what I want to do is I want to nudge everything just a little bit closer. So I'm going to select these four on top. I'm going to nudge those down one. I'm going to select these four on the bottom, nudge them over one. I'm going to select these four on the right, nudge them over to the left one. And I'm going to select these four on the left and nudge them over to the right one. I'm still going to get a little bit of a line, but you'll see that it's getting better. So again, I got to go reach off the other screen in here. And you can see right now, I still have the diagonals to worry about. So the diagonals can be fixed by selecting the top two and give a nudge down. I can select these bottom and give them a nudge up. I can select these over here and over to the left. And I can select these over and over to the left. So they're, they're kind of overlapping a little more. Let's see what that looks like. And again, I got to get my banner here. And there it is. It looks exactly the way it's supposed to. And uh, it's moving the, to the degree that it's moving fast. It's because I've only got a three second animation. If I want to slow it down, I just need to go back into the original scene. 
and I can just start adding keyframes here. So if I click and drag straight up and do a bunch of F5s, I've extended the timeline there. If I click over here, I've extended the timeline between those two keyframes. And if I hold the Shift F5, that gets extended more so. And here, and I'm just going to stop it at 5 right there. So let's see what that looks like. So now it's moving a lot slower. And you can see the effect that you're, that you're getting. So there are other options. You could essentially get the animation to come and slow down to a stop. And then you could add whatever text you wanted. But uh, that's going to be attractive in the sense that it's going to attract somebody's eye to try to recognize what's going on with this banner. Okay, that's all there is to it. Hope the technique is useful. Uh, at very least, uh, make an example of this file and uh, save it to your uh, uh, example folder.